This is KGW News at Sunrise. Topping headlines this morning, a surprising move at Portland State. The school's president is stepping down. How much he'll be getting paid for not working. Plus, they lost their grandmother to Alzheimer's. Then they lost her wedding ring. How it disappeared after their loved one's death. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Thanks for waking up with us to start your day. I'm Brittany Falkers alongside Vanessa Paz. And man, it has just been so gorgeous. A little sweltering out there, though, yesterday. It was hot. In fact, I don't know if you knew this, Brittany, but we broke a record I yesterday. I thought we did. I could feel it in my yeah, bones. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> it was uh, 85, in case anyone wants to know or they didn't tune in yesterday, was a record at the Portland airport for yesterday. Uh, and we broke a record. We hit 89 yesterday. And today, record 91 could we possibly hit it well we will see i'll get more into that in my full forecast but in the meantime i do want to take you uh over our satellite and radar composite and show you that of course high pressure is thanks to all these warm and gorgeous conditions we are avoiding any um trace of any clouds or precipitation at least for the next several days until it makes a return I'll explain later in my full forecast, but that's uh, some good news for those who are celebrating Mother's Day. In the mid 50s, we go out along the coast. No shot, unfortunately. We got a black screen there, but let's move you closer to the Portland metro area where the sun is rising. Gorgeous shot here, 54 degrees right now, and we are seeing some calm winds. Other temperatures across the area waking up uh, to the lower 50s out along the coast and closer to the Portland metro area. A little warmer, 54 down, uh, 50 down in the western valleys, and today we will heat up to 87 degrees record is 91 so maybe we'll beat it in some in some spots as far as the records go maybe we won't overnight lows lower 50s tomorrow much much cooler in the lower 70s and this starts the trend of a cool down i will explain later on in my full forecast Brittany. all right thanks so much vanessa and we do begin with a quick traffic alert this morning the i-405 northbound to i-5 southbound ramp is closed and won't reopen until monday morning that's the interchange you hit after crossing the fremont bridge to the east side of the river that'll also affect how you get from 405 to i-84 ODOT will have detour signs posted. And for 64 years, she never took it off of her finger. Um, this is a very special ring to the family. A double dose of heartbreak in Long Beach. A Southwest Washington family lost their matriarch and one of her most prized possessions. The woman's family says Providence Portland Medical Center lost her wedding ring after she passed away from complications of Alzheimer's. KGW's Mike Benner has our story. She was the glue of our family. Cheryl Granlund was the matriarch of her family, a woman looked up to by so many, as granddaughter Kaylee Granlund points out. She was just one amazing woman who held this family together. So it should come as no surprise the family was devastated when the 84-year-old Cheryl died in late April after a long battle with Alzheimer's. She ended up passing away from a heart attack at Providence Medical Center in Portland on Gleason. This here is one of the last pictures of Cheryl. Notice the wedding ring. Cheryl's husband of more than 60 years won it at a fair when the two were dating. As you can imagine, it doesn't have a lot of monetary value, but lots of sentimental value. The family did not want to lose it. The hospital had told my grandfather that the ring would be transported with the body um, when the funeral home came to pick her up. If only it was that simple. The funeral home did in fact pick up Cheryl's body. But there was no ring. The funeral home contacted the Grandlands right away. Then Kaylee's dad called the hospital. We didn't hear from them. We contacted them again. And all of a sudden, oh, well, there's this investigation that's going on because, you know, we don't, wear it and we don't know where your, where your ring is. We should be healing right now. We should not be trying to get something that belongs to us back. Nobody from the hospital wanted to go on camera. But they sent this statement to KGW. In addition to apologizing to the family, it says, We do have processes and procedures in place to ensure the safe return of valuables to patients and their families. We deeply regret any instance when we fall short. In addition to reviewing our actions, we will also look at our processes to see if changes need to be made to strengthen those. They say that they're investigating it right now. Um, my family and I really don't feel that. Kaylee Granlund is hoping other families learn from her family's misfortune. She's also hoping that decades old wedding ring turns up. I would like the ring back for my grandfather. 
I feel like it's bad enough that she was already buried without this ring. The least that could happen is that this ring goes back to the proper owner, my, my grandfather. Our thanks to Mike Benner for that report. Now in Seattle, police are hunting for a gunman after sh a shooting near downtown yesterday afternoon. Investigators say a car showed up to a hospital with five people inside. One man was dead and two others were hurt. The other two got out of the car and took off. That made the hospital a crime scene. It was locked down for hours, diverting incoming patients to other hospitals. The shooting happened in Seattle's central district, a little east of downtown. The two other shooting victims are reportedly in satisfactory condition. It's a major change at Portland State University. School President Dr. Ramat Shireshi suddenly announced his resignation yesterday. Dr. Shireshi had only been president since 2017. Now he will be on paid administrative leave until his resignation takes effect in December. He'll get paid $880,000 over the next 15 months. It's very close to a year's worth of pay. Shireshi agreed to leave after six days of negotiating. Our news partner, The Oregonian, reports PSU Board of Trustees had lost faith in Shireshi's ability to lead. The decision made today, you saw Dr. Shireshi's resignation letter, and again, the board feels the settlement was reasonable, and this outcome is the best in, in, is in the best interest of both the university and Dr. Shireshi. So that's what I'll say on the record for that. Stephen Piercy will take over as acting president. He's the dean of the school's College of Urban and Public Affairs. Well, if you take rideshare cars like Uber or Lyft to and from the airport, there are some changes coming that you're going to want to know about. First, PDX created two separate lines outside of rivals, one for Uber, one for Lyft. Second, drivers for both companies say they're getting emails about a new system that will go into effect Monday that will change how you get picked up. When you request a ride to pick you up at PDX, instead of being assigned a specific driver and car, you'll get a code. You then walk up to the first available driver, that driver types in your code, and you're good to go. Drivers say the idea is a way to cut down on wait times. Well, it's going to be a way faster process, not looking for a certain driver, so I'm going to love it. Uh, you know, the wait's just, uh, just a matter of there being a lot of people. Yeah, I, I don't know that it's going to work. I can see him bailing on it. Now, drivers say that the company has used this technology at other events with big crowds. They don't know if it's going to be used elsewhere around the Portland area or at other airports. We expect more details about the new system Monday. That's when drivers say it will officially launch. While the weather is hot and dry, rivers are still running fast and very cold. But there's another reason to be cautious. Lifeguards aren't on duty just yet at some popular spots. That includes High Rocks in Gladstone and Glen Auto Park in Troutdale. Lifeguards are usually staffed there by Memorial Day weekend. But this year, the heat is early and those lifeguards are still in training. People need to know that currently the, the water is swift, the water is cold, and the water is high. The temperature of the Clackamas River right now is 53 degrees. If you do decide to swim, make sure to wear a life jacket or wetsuit and always have a buddy nearby just in case. Well, just in time for the heat, Portland's Water Bureau is working with fire agencies to protect the Bull Run watershed. That watershed is a massive forest on the back side of the Columbia Gorge that provides Portland with all of its drinking water. The people in charge of protecting the area say the watershed does not typically dry out until early July. The area is closed to the public and security guards make frequent trips around the boundary to look for illegal campers. A fire tower is staffed during the worst of the season, all to protect our drinking water. All of your drinking water is coming basically from this area, which is almost entirely within the Mount Hood National Forest um, into Portland. So it's a big reason why, you know, we have to do whatever we can to prepare for any kind of event that might uh, impact the Bull Run watershed. Two years ago, the Eagle Creek fire crossed an outer boundary of the Bull Run, but did not damage the watershed. The last really big fire there was almost 150 years ago in 1873. Summer is, of course, almost here, and that means summer jobs for teenagers. How McDonald's is helping their young employees towards getting a college education.